morning and happy Tuesday, folks. It's Tuesday, December 4th, 2018. You're watching The Daily Mix TV by Hill Story Marketing. Hi, my name is Sean Patrick Hillman. So a cluster of iconic established century-old tuna fish brands are fighting to stay alive and for a place in Generation Y's lunchbox. Brands like, you know, Starkist, uh, Chicken of the Sea, and Bumblebee, they're facing serious problems because... Unlike Generation X, millennials were not brought up on tuna fish sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as kids. So older uh, Gen Xers and younger baby boomers who were the parents of the millennial generation, they were the first group to really seek out fresher, less processed options in terms of their foods. So whether that was lunch you brought to work or when you, you know, sought out at lunchtime what you were going to have you know, in, in a place like New York City, as an example, that gave rise to salad bars and things like this. So millennials have ascribed to that behavior in terms of those more fresh, less processed options. Now, herein lies the problem. Because millennials don't look at tuna fish as a staple, they're basically indifferent to the product, and what that's done is led to declining demand and sales. So like other packaged food makers, tuna companies are really trying to figure out how do we target millennials? How do we get into their lunch box or, you know, frankly, into their lunch bag or whatever it is that you bring to work? Now, many are seeking to actually reboot and look at tuna as a fresh, healthy snack option in terms of their positioning. So that's a smart move. Because if you can turn that from a meal into a snack, you might actually get a higher uh, bandwidth in terms of sales. Some are also changing the way that they're packaging their products. Studies have shown that many millennials don't actually own a can opener in their home. And most tuna is sold in cans. So I think this is brilliant for Starkiss, Bumblebee, and Chicken of the Sea. I'm a big fan of innovating and pivoting your business based on behavior and what's going on so long as you stay within the confines of your brand DNA. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the tuna fish industry is going to change things up a little bit and go the more healthy snack route option. Now, one of our favorite brands, Ikea. You know, I love the Swedish furniture maker for a whole lot of reasons, but of course there are always some challenges in terms of putting things together at home and, and those kinds of things. You know, if there's a screw missing or you misread a direction by accident and you end up with something that looks like a jigsaw puzzle instead of, frankly, a couch. Uh, it does happen, folks. But they have had a really rough year. They reported less than acceptable earnings, those kinds of things, which led to a drop in their stock. Now, they're deciding to pivot their strategy, and this has been in the pipeline for quite some time. IKEA is planning to open its first city-centered store in the United States next year, as it looks to shift its retail space from those big box outlets in suburbia to and rural markets to basically smaller spaces in urban metros. So the IKEA planning studio is opening in Manhattan in the spring. It's going to be located in Midtown on 3rd Avenue. I believe it's going to be a three-story store. The world's biggest furniture retailer has opened similar stores in London and Stockholm, but here's the catch, guys. You cannot physically walk out of this store with product. They're going to have demonstration areas set up like they do in the big box stores in terms of those, here's how your living room should look, here's how your kid's room could look, those kinds of things. You go in, you choose the products you want, and they will deliver them to you from a nearby warehouse. So no more little pencil on the scratch sheet uh, in these kinds of stores. Of course, the big box stores will still be open and you'll still be able to do that there. But this is not a cash and carry. This is, in fact... Uh, you know, charge it up, cash, whatever it is, and then they'll deliver it to you uh, very shortly after your visit. Now, it looks like my fellow iPhone addicts are going to have to wait until 2020 to get their hands on an iPhone capable of running on a 5G high-speed mobile network. The tech giant has followed the same approach with the introduction of 3G and 4G to allow bugs to be worked out of various systems. Now, experts are saying delaying a 5G-enabled iPhone is risky since the improvement in the network speed will be dramatic and allow competitors to take an edge. So in other words, it appears that the 5G rollout is very different to 4G or even 4G LTE, which was the next step, which most uh, users in, mobile, in major metros have now. When new higher speed bandwidths open up, 
You got companies like Verizon and AT&T that bid for licenses, frequency priority, and more. Once approved, those providers then upgrade their respective towers with the appropriate equipment to accommodate the new bandwidth. But during the 4G rollout, as an example, there were a lot of hiccups. And you had heavy call drop-offs, you had data fall off, the whole thing. Now, so Apple doing this makes sense to a degree. But something tells me, given the excitement around 5G and, you know, and what's going on in terms of that rollout, we've been talking about it for a couple of years now. The idea that Cook and company are going to miss out on an opportunity here comes to the forefront, unfortunately. And I do hope I'm wrong, given the beating that Apple stock has taken in the last couple of months. Lance Morrow, who's a writer at the Wall Street Journal, he wrote an opinion piece on Friday in the Wall Street Journal I thought you might want to hear a snippet of. So uh, again, remember, we don't get into politics at the Daily Mix TV, but this is interesting from a pop culture and societal perspective. So outrage has become the signature emotion of American public life. People are so used to it, the noise, the flying spittle, that they were pleasantly surprised when Representative-elect Dan Crenshaw of Texas declined to be incensed. He is the former Navy SEAL who lost an eye in Afghanistan and was mocked, more stupidly than viciously, for his eye patch by a, form, by a performer on Saturday Night Live. The insult called for outrage in the usual tit-for-tat, but instead Mr. Crenshaw took it in good humor. He went on SNL to accept the performer's apology. Now, not everything needs to be treated as an outrage, he said, a grown-up in a moment of grace. Well, people have been mad as hell for much of the 21st century, starting roughly with the stalemated Bush-Gore election in 2000, followed quickly by 9-11. Fundamentals have been changing fundamentally. Marriage, sexual identity, racial politics, geopolitics. Outrage flourishes also because of the rise of social media, the endless electronic brawl, and because it plays so well on our screens. Cable news draws pictures and crayons in bold primary colors that turn politics into cartoons. On the left, stay, stay woke means stay outraged. Trumpians want to lock her up or build a wall. Outrage is reductive, easy to understand. It is an idiom of childhood, a throwback even to the terrible twos. So basically Lance is saying that we have regressed in age and are acting like a bunch of children. And you know what? He's right. Given the holiday season is upon us, can we do this? Can we just give peace a chance? I thought you folks might appreciate this little throwback today. Put on your yarmulke, here comes Hanukkah. So much funaka to celebrate Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the festival of lights. Instead of one day of presents, we have eight crazy nights. <laughs> That's right, it's Hanukkah. May the season be ever so brighter during the Festival of Lights this year. Happy Hanukkah to all of our viewers who are celebrating. Now, in closing, I know this sounds crazy to some, but believe it or not, this is National Influenza Vaccination Week. As we head into the heart of the holiday season and the flu is running rampant in many cities like New York right now, please go to your local CVS to get your flu shot. Flu shots are available seven days a week with no appointment necessary at CVS Pharmacy and Minute Clinic locations nationwide, including locations inside select Target stores. So consumers can easily find the store closest to them using cvs.com flu or the CVS Pharmacy app. And for those patients planning to go to a Minute Clinic for their flu shot, location information and current wait times can be found on the CVS Pharmacy app or Minute Clinic. Com. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO of Hill Story Marketing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of the Daily Mix TV. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Hump Day.